Today I'm gonna to share one of my favorite alternative burger recipes with you. This one uses ground pork instead of beef and I put an Asian flair on it by adding ginger, garlic, and hoisin sauce. Then I top it with a slice of grilled pineapple and a vinegar bok choy slaw. I'm making it for the first time on a campfire style open pit. Now you can easily make this uh, on the barbecue or pan fry it on the stove. In fact, most of the time I pan fry it. Hope you guys enjoy it. But we're gonna start off with our garlic sriracha aioli. Now, in my house, my youngest son is not super great with spicy foods. Everyone else is okay. Uh, my oldest son actually has the best tolerance for heat. So you can put, I, in the recipe, I'll put uh, half a teaspoon to one teaspoon. Half a teaspoon, you still want some sort of tiny kick. It's not gonna burn your mouth, but you wanna be able to taste the pepper from the sriracha sauce. You can put in one and a half if you like it spicy, but one teaspoon should be good. And I'm gonna push it tonight, even though he's gonna be having this, I'm gonna put a full teaspoon of uh, sriracha in the actual aioli. And that's gonna go on the top and the bottom bun. Very, very simple, very uh, easy to make. Once you have this made, put it in the cooler or put it in the fridge. All right, we're gonna start off with a half cup of mayonnaise. I use uh, Hellman's, oh no, is this Miracle Whip? I think it's Hellman's Real Miracle Whip. Oh, whatever, whatever your favorite mayonnaise is, use that, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's to taste, and if you're used to a certain mayonnaise, then that's what you should use. Half a teaspoon of garlic powder, not salt, that's important, you're gonna salt to taste after. So you're just gonna put that in there. We're gonna do a squeeze of a lime. You don't have to char this. I, I charred it. Actually, this is the first time, to be honest with you, that I charred it. I've used charred lime and charred lemons in other recipes, but I thought I'd bring a little bit uh, of a complexity to the aioli this time. So you're gonna want about a tablespoon, which is about half a lime. And this is gonna bring some sourness and a little bit of bitterness too. Limes actually have a little bit of bitterness. You wanna use a lemon instead. If you prefer lemons, then use a lemon. It doesn't really matter. And you don't, like I said, you don't have to char it at all. Now with the sriracha sauce, of course it exploded onto my hand. What sauces like to do, if you leave them out too long. Now hopefully this isn't gonna to be too hot for my son so whatever about half to one whole teaspoon of sriracha this is sugar now i know some of you don't like sugar and people are like oh man they added sugar and everything sugar is important in anything especially when you're bringing acidity um, or bitterness sugar helps to balance things so it's all about balancing stuff so you're not going to add all this sugar in that would be way too much i bring it out because i actually add pinches of sugar and I, I do it to taste. So we're just gonna do a couple of very small pinches of sugar there. And then we're also gonna do a pinch. This is kosher salt. Uh, it's all I use. Don't, I mean, if you, whatever salt you have, you have. Don't go out and break the bank just to make something fancy. If you don't notice a taste difference in it, then just use whatever salt you got. So about half a teaspoon there. That's just slightly under half a teaspoon. You don't wanna start off strong. You wanna salt to taste. Whenever they say salt to taste, it's not, like what you prefer <laughs> the amount of salt it's what brings balance to whatever you're making so whenever you see that on a recipe that's what it means it's salt to taste it's you you want to keep tasting it up and making sure that the whatever it is that you're making is balanced you shouldn't taste it it shouldn't be salty it shouldn't be sweet like although i add sugar there that's just to balance the the tartness the bitterness and the sourness from the wine and the same thing with the the salt the biggest mistake that a lot of uh, home cooks make is they do not salt enough. That is one thing for sure. I think that's okay. I want a tad bit more salt in there. And actually a little bit of sugar, a little bit more sugar in there. I don't know if I can get any more of this lime out, and I will. I love, I love a, a punchy sort of acidity there. It really wakes up the sauce as well. I feel like a a meatball saying that oh it really wakes it up wake up but it does you, you you notice that like with pastas and everything if you give a squeeze of lemon at the end ooh, so much better good sauce ready to go all right we're gonna get on to our asian slaw and this isn't important it's gonna serve multiple purposes in the burger Remember, everything usually is about balance, right? I mean, obviously not a salad. Salad, you don't want to have umami. A crisp summer salad shouldn't uh, be tasting savory. Wow, those cicadas are noisy. Shut up. So the point of this Asian slot, now you don't have to make, like, if you <laughs> look at all the ingredients that I've got here, I personally think this tastes very, very good. 
However, you don't have to go to this extent. If you have like go to the grocery store, get an Asian vinaigrette, but you want something with a high acidity, okay? Whether it's a balsamic, an Asian vinaigrette, I will put the recipe for this in the description if you want to follow this exact one. Again, there's a lot of components to this, so if you want to get an Asian vinaigrette, that's fine. The point of the Asian slaw on the burger is to bring bitterness, sourness, crunch from the, uh, the bok choy, the, the shallots and the carrots, a, a bit of that crunch to it. And of course, a cold aspect. Because again, when you're making something, you wanna to touch on all those notes. You want that umami, sweet, salty, sour. You want hot and cold. You want soft and crunchy. All of those sort of variations of one particular meal will make it feel complete. And that is why this is important. So you don't have to use coleslaw. If you wanna use like a lettuce, if you prefer lettuce, just don't use something like uh, iceberg lettuce or what is it called, bib lettuce. Very, very mild, very bland. Use something like uh, arugula or spinach, something with a bit of bitterness to it and use a vinaigrette. You want that bitterness, you want that crunch and you want that sourness as well. So we're gonna go into all of this. I, I do have a bit of coconut uh, milk that I'm gonna be using. It's not, you're not gonna be able to taste it, but I use it as an emulsifier. So I use a little bit of Dijon as well, which is a classic emulsifier. It's what binds it together. So in any vinaigrette, whether you got uh, oil and vinegar, it's like oil and water, they don't mix. And you use something like egg yolk, honey, uh, Dijon, uh, mayo, all those sort of things are emulsifiers. They allow it to sort of be suspended and look like one solution, although they're not really, but they give that appearance. And that's what I'm using the coconut milk as well as the Dijon. So let's slap this all uh, together and let's uh, get the slaw ready. All right, we're gonna start off with some rice vinegar. Now you can use almost any vinegar. You can use white wine vinegar if you want. I like rice vinegar because it's less acidic, it's less harsh. Just try to avoid plain old white vinegar that's a little too acidic and just doesn't taste good. So two tablespoons of rice vinegar. I'm gonna add some lime juice. Uh, I've charred this just to bring it a little more complex flavor and you want about a, a tablespoon of this or one half of a lime usually will do it. You want to squeeze that all in there. This is gonna bring not just an acidity, but it's also going to bring uh, a bitterness. For those of you that don't know, when limes are picked, they're actually picked not fully ripened with that green color. And it's also what imparts that bitterness. They're more acidic than a lemon. So if you prefer lemons, by all means use lemons. The only reason why I'm bringing this is because of that bitterness will balance that pineapple on it because the pineapple will be very sweet and we want to be able to cut through that uh, sweetness. So one full tablespoon or one half of a lime. Then we're going to bring in a tablespoon of hoisin sauce. This uh, kind of like teriyaki sauce, except this uses like soy sauce. So fermented soy, uh, it's more salty than teriyaki. Teriyaki tends to be sweeter. And if you didn't know, teriyaki as actually isn't Japanese, it's Hawaiian. Yeah, a little food for thought there. So one tablespoon, this is gonna bring some saltiness to it, so you shouldn't need any salt, but you know, sometimes you do, you gotta balance it, salt to taste, as they always say. Bring a bit of sweetness and saltiness and savoriness as well to it. All right, we're gonna bring in maple syrup. Yeah, it's very Canadian of me. You can bring in, you can use, uh, honey if you want uh, but you know you need to bring some sweetness to it because again it's bitter it's sour and we want to balance it the primary uh, purpose of this is that sourness but you still want to balance everything that you make so I like to bring in uh, maple syrup this happens to be a dark uh, maple syrup which has more of a maple flavor but you can't actually taste it in here it's just what I had on hand so a tablespoon of that now we're going to do three tablespoons of olive oil. I always have the uh, bold flavor. I figure if you're going to use olive oil, you might as well use the kind of olive oil that actually has a flavor. So olive oil tastes delicious. It's good. I use, do a lot of uh, Italian cooking, so to me, olive oil, super importante. Next, we're gonna do a tablespoon of sesame oil. This is not toasted sesame oil. If you smell this, which you can't, but you're gonna to have to trust me, this has a very slightly nutty smell to it. Very, very, like almost like a peanut oil. 
uh, definitely not like toasted. This is uh, what they called expeller pressed. I guess it's kind of like cold pressed, something around there. I could be totally off, but it's not toasted. That's the main thing, but it will impart a nice nutty flavor to it. And speaking of sesame oil, we're going to bring in toasted sesame oil, half a tablespoon. This stuff is very, very strong. We don't believe me, half a tablespoon. It's going to be plenty. You don't want to be overpowering it. Everything should be balanced. All the flavors should be balanced in the end. That's what we're aiming for here. All right, we're gonna bring in some Dijon. This is, again, the flavor isn't important, uh, isn't really that important. It's the emulsifier, because if you can see and see the oil separated from the vinegar, that's what happens. It's, you know, oil or water, uh, oil on water. Blah, blah, blah. So this is gonna help bind it all together. That and the coconut milk that I've got here. So this is half a tablespoon of some Dijon. You're not gonna taste it that much. It's gonna probably give a little bit of uh, flavor to it, but it's not gonna be enough to overpower the hoisin and the toasted sesame. Next, and I brought this out here. Oh geez, I did a little bit tight here. A Little bit of coconut milk. Again, you'd think that you'd be able to taste this, but you can't really. I love using coconut milk. I also happen to love Thai food and they happen to use coconut milk a lot. So I always have coconut milk in the pantry. So a couple of tablespoons of that should do it. All right, we are going to mix this up. Now I do have salt and pepper. I didn't put any in there, but as I said before, the hoisin sauce that I put in there, because it's partly made of soy sauce, it's very high in sodium. Don't, I don't anticipate needing it, but I bring it out because always season to taste, always balance. If I don't taste anything and I feel like it needs a little bit of salt, then I'll add a pinch into it. So just find any container that you have on hand. A mason jar works perfectly. So you can see it's all sort of separated right now, but if you give this a good shake, you can already see instantly it just emulsifies. And very important, every step of the way. Oh, that looks really nice. That's a nice, nice little sauce there. I'm not looking to make a creamy slaw. I know there's a lot of high creamy slaws out there. This is more of a vinegar slaw. It's more of an acidic one. So make sure you taste everything. The primary thing that you want to be tasting in it is the acidity. As long as there is an acidity, you might taste a little bit of bitterness. This is actually perfectly fine. It's more than fine, it's delicious, but who doesn't say it's delicious? It's like everyone on TV, every time they taste it, even if it tastes like butt, like, oh my, mm, that's good. And then they're like, bleh, bleh, bleh. I always wonder if it is it really delicious or are they just saying that? So we got that ready. Now we're gonna go on to mixing our slaw. All right, so for a little Asian flair, we've got around three cups of thinly sliced bok choy. Now, no, most of it probably, I don't know, if you look at that, I'd say two thirds plus is gonna be the white part. You wanna chop the ends off and very, very thinly sliced. Like I'll show you this, it's it's very thin. These are very, very thin pieces, but uh, again, it's that crunch. That's what we're looking for. I did inc include some of the green because the green will have a, bit, a bitterness to it. And again, we're looking for sour and bitterness to balance the rest of the burger. So that's kind of important. So three cups of that. You can use uh, normal onion if you want any onion, whatever you're comfortable with. No onion if you don't like onion. Again, it's just gonna give it a little bit of flavor, a little bit of a bite and a crunch to it as well. So this is about half a cup of thinly sliced shallots. I'm gonna put that in there. And then one carrot that's been grated on a box grater. You know, like those box graters, just on the coarse grind. You wanna add that. It'll add a little sweetness, help balance everything out. And then what we're gonna do so we're gonna put a little bit of this on. Don't pour all of this on, it's gonna be way too much. We just want it coated so that every bite, you can taste the acidity, you can taste the, the dressing. That's the important part of this. This we just make in bulk. If you wanna put a side salad and there's a little bit left over, then use it for that, it'll be perfect. So let's just put a little bit on there, mix it all up and get that ready. All right, let's add a little bit to this. And we'd also don't want it super soggy either, right? A little bit on there. Oh that looks really good. Start off slow. You can always add more, but if you put too much on, you can't take it away. It's the best way to go. It's the same thing with salting. Salt slowly, 
and over time because you don't want to add too much salt when you're salting things. Not that you're going to be salting this, but just as a general rule, very hard. You can balance salt after for sure. It's just kind of a pain in the butt. You got to add more sugar or more acidity or more whatever it is that you're making and sometimes that's not always an option. So once you've gone past that point of perfectly seasoned, it just becomes salty and that's not really enjoyable. So get this all mixed in. You just want a light mix. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is going on top of our burger. So I'm just going to taste a little bit of it. I think we could add a little bit more. Perfect. That should be just about right. It was right on the line. I don't like too much. I don't want it overpowering. I don't want it dripping. Perfect. Ready to go. All right, the apple, the Asian apple pork burger here. If you never had a pork burger before, I mentioned this before and a buddy of mine was like, what, I've never even heard of one. I know, hamburgers. You know what's funny? Maybe I should have looked this up before. I was gonna look it up. I'm like, why do they call it ham burger? Ham is from pork. Anyway, I'll have to look that up. Maybe you guys know, put it in the comments below. So this uh, is very simple. I've got 600 grams worth of ground pork. Uh, pork is actually really good. It's got a lot of fat on it. So there's gonna be a lot of flavor. Worst thing you can do with, if you have a normal hamburger, if you know anything about hamburgers, is normally you want like an 80-20. You want 20% fat, 80% meat. Uh, you know, most of the grocery stores give you that lean or extra lean, which is 90-10. Terrible for burgers, terrible for flavor. This is a little bit tricky here. Now, because I'm introducing things like sesame oil, which is additional liquid, and then of course you've got the gr uh, grated apple that's gonna go in it, one uh, green apple. Green apple's sort of important. I've experimented with other uh, apples as well, the sweeter ones, uh, I think it's the honey crisp. I think that's the one there most flavorful uh, apple out there is uh, is considered the honey crisp but you want that tartness from the green apple again it's about balance that pineapple slice is so sweet you need to be able to balance it we don't want to work just like in normal hamburgers we don't want to overwork the meat or else you're going to get more of a meatloaf than a burger consistency so that's really important if you grind your own meat so much easier so what we're going to do is we're going to take all of this stuff and we're gonna sort of coat the the green apple before we put it into the meat so that we don't have to worry about getting the the spices all in one section everything's gonna be even as long as we disperse the apple evenly we're gonna be good to go if you have too much liquid if you add stuff like uh, Worcestershire sauce or fish sauce which you can add more umami completely unnecessary especially with pork there's way more umami in this than there is in uh, normal hamburger so you don't need to add that but if you do you're gonna need a binder that's why people add things like breadcrumbs and everything like that if you make a plain burger you don't need binders you don't need breadcrumbs you don't need you know corn, uh, potato flakes because it'll bind normally but when you're adding stuff like this it'll tend to fall apart if you're not careful so you have to make sure that you squeeze the juice out of this don't leave it I know it's flavor but trust me if you leave too much juice in it your burger is gonna fall apart and it's gonna be a disaster so let's get this stuff together like I said, we're gonna coat the apple first. So we're gonna get a teaspoon of the toasted, whoop, or a little bit more. Boom, Flavor Town. Let's put that in there. Who says that? Is that Guy Fieri that says that? Uh, tablespoon of finely diced or minced uh, green onion. And then this is gonna be our half teaspoon of uh, garlic powder, quarter teaspoon of ground ginger. Remember, it's, I prefer Again, I prefer fresh. I usually always use fresh in most of the stuff that I cook. But again, if you're introducing more liquids into this, then you're gonna need a binder. And I wanna stay away from binders. I don't want a meatloaf burger. I want uh, a pork burger. And then a quarter teaspoon of uh, chili. That's why I'm using the powder and not the fresh stuff. Fresh is always tastier. I agree 100%. And don't add the salt in either. You can, if you're gonna grill this right away, by all means, put this, put like a half teaspoon to a full teaspoon of salt in this for this amount of meat. I would probably lean more towards a full teaspoon. You know, the whole debate of seasoning right before it goes on the grill versus after, there's not enough time for that salt to damage this if you're gonna cook it right away. But we have to build a fire, so I'm not gonna do that or else it is gonna kind of ruin that. So we're just gonna mix this all up like this. Just gonna get it evenly coated. It doesn't have to be perfect easier to coat this up and work this because you're not going to be able to overwork this than to overwork the actual pork. That's 
the big thing there. We want to just barely get that incorporated in there, but we don't want clumps or else those clumps are going to mat, you know, cause it to crumble and cause it to fall apart. And besides, I've never made this burger over a fire and I don't need more issues. All right, so that looks pretty mixed up. And now we're going to add that to our pork. And we're going to be making a third pounders, not quarter pounders, but a third, which is about 150 grams. Well, it's a, like 151 or something like that if you're being more precise. But so again, don't overwork the, the meat. We just want to get that stuff sort of incorporated into there. Be gentle with it. Don't smash it. Don't like smush it in your hands and everything. You're trying to retain the, the texture of the, of the grind as much as possible. It's impossible for it to be perfect like a normal burger because we have to make sure this is incorporated in there. But anyway, we're gonna mix those up. You know what's really fun? Having a roaring fire when there's a heat wave. It's really nice. I'm really looking forward to it. Anyway, let's start this off. Uh, we actually had a lot of rain over the last couple of days, so this is kind of damp. Uh, this is very wet, so I've got a couple of pieces of wood down in the pit just sort of to bring it off the cold, damp floor. One thing I'm gonna say, if you've never started a fire, it seems pretty simple. I've seen a lot of people fail at starting it, even at home when they have one of these, the fire starters, all that stuff, because they're not prepared. They simply think it's like, throw some paper in, throw some wood in, light it, and boom, you got fire. You need to have steps. You need to have kindling. You need to have the next little small sticks, then a bigger stick, then a bigger stick. What you're doing is you're building a base. You need to have enough heat to sustain the next level. You can't just throw on one of these big logs after you've lit a little bit of kindling. There's just simply not enough coal, not enough base heat to keep things going, and then you'll see it go out and people are like trying to fan it. If you build it properly, and I say this, watch it fail terribly. Um, that's what usually what the biggest mistake is. So just remember, start slow, build that base up before you throw big chunks on. Lots of kindling is really good to have. Now I'm cheating, obviously, I'm at home. I'm not here to wrestle a bear for you. These are fire starters. Uh, I should actually only need one. One, and then I've got a bunch of kindling here. Just some shavings that I used my hatchet with. We're gonna throw those on top. Again, be prepared. And then I have all these small sticks, so it should be fairly easy this thing here. I don't like these uh, fire starters usually. This is a weird one. They look like compressed cardboard. I can't say that I've ever used them. Honestly, I'm kind of old school. I I prefer to use uh, just paper and sticks and stuff like that. I think that should be good. So we're going to add some on this. Hopefully that doesn't snuff it all out. There we go. I don't even think I needed the uh, the fire starter. This stuff is so thin, like that. And then you're just gonna take your next level. Once that stuff starts burning there, you wanna have it ready, right? Just very gently, don't, don't snuff it, don't suffocate it. Put the thin stuff on there. Get some of that thin stuff going. Be patient. Don't expect a, a roaring fire within like 0.2 seconds, you know? And you need to have oxygen. If you put too much on all at once, you're gonna snuff it out. Fire needs oxygen to burn. Just keep that in mind. I'm keeping it on this side because the grate's gonna go across here. I want it open on one side of the fire so that if I ever wanted to use the coals and put something in there, then I can. So we're already, we're up and running here. And again, just, just be patient. Throw some stuff on you. As you see it start burning, Put more and more on. You don't have to rush. There should be plenty of wood here for it to, to catch on. And don't burn yourself. So that's what we're gonna be doing. We're just gonna be building this.
nice and piping hot. Uh, I'm also going to be throwing on a couple of uh, veggie burgers for my wife, Pam, because she is a vegetarian. And obviously pork, it's not on the menu for her. These are impossible meat burgers. If you're a vegetarian or you know someone who's a vegetarian, this is the best vegetarian beef patty by far. By far. And not even close. All the other ones are not even close. This one will bleed like it's beef. And if I, if I can show you, I will. But anyway, you like my homemade grill? All the other ones are so expensive. I got this grill at Canadian Tire, which is a hardware store here in Canada, $50. Ones to fit this actual pit start usually around $150 and go up to like over $200. They want something for this size. So I got a couple of uh, iron dowels here, or steel dow uh, dowels that were like three or $5 a piece. $50 grill, took some lock wire, boom. Grill time, baby. Uh, I'm gonna be honest with you, I have not, I have not uh, barbecued on an open fire probably since I was in the military. So this is as much fun for me as it is for you. Let's see, please don't fall apart on me. Let's... All right, we got a sizzle going, that's good. These are third pounders, third pound of, of meat on there. Hopefully, that's enough heat to keep things going. It feels pretty hot. It's not the same as a barbecue, so so much harder to regulate on an uh, open campfire, right? You've got the coals. You don't want flames, because flames will just burn the heck out. Oh, dude, so close. I almost forgot to season. This is what I did last time I was wrong. And remember, there's no salt in it. A lot of this fat is gonna drip off, so be very generous with your salt. I'm not saying bathe it in it, but you want to be pretty heavy with the with the salt here because remember this is a high fat burger so when this thing gets flipped over a lot of the grease and the juices are going to dissolve the salt and it's just going to you know plop off that's kind of the other nice thing about putting salt in the patty i know people are like no don't do it it ruins it and everything like that again it ruins it if you let it sit around and allow that salt to do what it does which is you know turn it into meatloaf but if you mix it form the patties throw it on the grill it's not going to do anything wrong in fact Gordon Ramsay does it that way I know he's not the barbecue pit master but he does know a thing or two about cooking I guess we're gonna let these puppies sit for like I don't know four minutes per side I'll have to check I have not cooked on an open fire like this in a long time might as well throw these monstrosities on there too oh wait you know what I did not grease that sticking there we go they look more beef beefy than the pork burger that's for sure Apple. This is going to do two things. It is going to make the pineapple taste, oops, taste sweeter, which it doesn't actually do that, but I'll explain that. It's going to caramelize a little bit of that, and I'm going to glaze it with some hoisin sauce, which you can use teriyaki. I think the more common thing with uh, glazing pineapple slices on the open grill is to use teriyaki sauce but teriyaki sauce is actually sweeter than hoisin sauce and since pineapples are already sweet I'm not gonna put sweet on sweet it's fine it doesn't it doesn't matter but I'm more about the balance and I've never glazed with hoisin so it could be a big mistake uh, but I figure the umami from the soy and the, the salt in it might agree with it so if you didn't know pineapple what happens when you grill it is it actually destroys the enzyme in pineapple uh, which is I think it's called bromelain bromelain something like that it's the same enzyme why pineapples used to tenderize meat because it'll actually break down the protein now 
if you eat enough raw like cold pineapple I'm not sure if you notice this but your mouth starts to get a little raw like almost like you eat too many sour patch kids or something like that and the reason being is the bromelain the enzyme that's in this will remove and break down the mucus that's on your tongue and the roof of your mouth and it makes it feel raw and what it does is it exposes your your mouth and your tongue to the acid that's in pineapple and it makes it taste a lot more acidic than it actually is if you ate like say a lemon or a lime right after eating pineapple it would be even worse because that mucus barrier has been removed by the enzyme but when you grill pineapple what happens is it breaks down and removes that enzyme so that's why when you grill it, it you're like oh well it tastes sweeter well you can't add sugar Grilling, <laughs> throwing something over heat doesn't physically add more sugar to something and caramelizing it just changes the the, the taste of it but what you're doing is you're getting rid of that other enzyme so the acid doesn't feel so prevalent when you're when you're doing that and that's why you want to grill it as well it's going to break that down you don't want it super acidic and it's going to give it a really nice sort of caramelized taste so we're just going to grill it for a, i don't know like a minute on this side flip it over glaze it and then glaze the other side and sort of burn a little bit of the glaze off because i don't want too much of this it's a very strong sauce so i have no idea actually i'm going to pre-glaze this side could be a big mistake i don't know if you guys glaze pineapples and stuff like that Oh yeah, that's fine. I don't want to put too much on there because I don't want it overpowered. I like pineapple, but I've made these with the, the pineapple several times already, like not on the open flames and stuff. And I find the pineapple is very powerful and overpowering. It can almost be too sweet. That's why you really want that acidity from the, the slaw to balance, uh, to balance out the pineapple. It's very, very, very important that you add something with acid or else it's just gonna to be too sweet. Like, I, I don't mind sweet. I'm a savory, salty kind of person, but I like the flavors from the pineapple. I think they really match or sort of fit this. So I'm gonna let this cool a little bit longer. Let's see where we're, where we're at here. We just want some lines in there, enough heat to sort of break it down. And again, I think next time I'm gonna do the way more coals and get a way higher heat. I don't think this was near hot enough not hot enough for what I wanted it for anyway. We don't need all these pieces, but hey, you know. All right, it's time for the magic. We're gonna first, oh geez, what was that? Is that grass? Ah, camping. Well, not really camping, but you're gonna put a little of that aioli on the bottom bun. I mean, if it's too strong for you, you don't like a lot of sauce or whatever, you don't have to do that, but I put a little on the bottom, a little on the top. Just give it a little bit of that nice, uh, I don't put a lot, I'm not huge on that. My boys love dousing that. And then we're gonna put the burger on, like this. Slice of the pineapple, grilled pineapple, like that. It's a little thicker than I wanted it. And then some of this bok choy slaw. Now I'm gonna be honest with you, I tasted the slaw again and I kind of wish that I had more acidity. So I'm gonna change, despite what you saw in the video, I'm gonna alter the recipe a little bit and add an extra tablespoon to the same thing of lime juice or lemon juice, whatever you uh, actually wanna use, because I find it's not quite acidic enough, at least for my taste. You might wanna taste it yourself, maybe it's fine for you, maybe you like things sweet, but I wanted a little bit more acidic just sort of to balance that, that pineapple burger. And then put a side salad on the right there. Boom. The Asian apple pork burger. It's fine that it looks good. It's all about the taste though, isn't it? Burger's very juicy. Again, the pineapple, so prominent. Mm. The burger itself is really good. I do think that a, a slight tweak to the uh, salad to add some more acid would balance this more. Because I can't cut that pineapple any thinner, it's just going to fall apart. Overall, pretty good. Things I've learned, haven't cooked on an open fire in so long, definitely need more coal base. Like it got hot, it was hot for a while, but once it was just the bed of coals, I think I needed way more, so I got to really take time to nurture that. Like it's plenty hot enough it just takes so long to cook which if you're cooking in a campsite you probably know that already but gets the job done mm. Asian apple pork burger delicious <laughs>